Adventure-seeking skiers and snowboarders will be heading out on the Powder Highway after this episode of Snowseekers TV. Revelstoke and Kicking Horse Mountain Resort are some bucket list destinations. Standing at the top of Kicking Horse Mountain Resort feels like you're on the top of the world. Civilization is replaced by snow-capped, rugged mountain peaks in all directions. It's hard to believe such paradise is less than three hours from the Calgary International Airport. With 120 marked runs, challenging shoots, wide open bowls, and chin tickling powder, you won't want to stop. But Apre Ski Toast in the Eagle Eye Restaurant at the Summit means another day of champagne powder will greet you in the morning. Well, there's a way that I look at the seasons. Right now we're in winter. After winter, we have post-winter. Then there's not winter, and then there's pre-winter. So anytime there's snow on the ground, I'm up here and I'm on it. I'm one of our senior staff uh, in the teaching and guiding department, and it's my job to make sure that anyone who comes here gets the best possible day they can. So the days when I'm working, I'm up here and I'm guiding people around and teaching them to enjoy our mountain environment. And even on the days off, I'm still up here. There are no days off, it's winter. In this zone B4, it's a soft closure that was only opened a few years ago, and basically it's locals only knowledge. It's some of our steepest trees and some of our deepest powder. A little bit hard to get into, but it's well worth the rewards once we get there. The thing that I find different about Kicking Horse relative to other resorts is the terrain, the challenge of it. I've been here for 12 years, I ski every single day, and I still challenge myself on a daily basis. It's a matter of moving 10 feet to the left in a chute and you're skiing a completely different line. One of the best parts about our mountain is that we're just a big family here. We're all here to support each other and the only thing that matters is that you love going down the hill on snow. The reason I'm here and the reason I keep doing what I do is I love to see people enjoy the mountain environment more and more. And it's easy for me to see what's holding someone back and it's easy for me to share that knowledge with them. It's that feeling of powder, you know, when you hit it and it just disappears and you're in a white room. Champagne dry, like white smoke rolling over top of you, it's like no other feeling. Whether you're on the slopes of Kicking Horse or on the streets of Golden, you are in for a great ride. Golden has always just felt like a really real Canadian town. It's got the amazing world-class resort, but the town and the people are very down to earth. There's many pubs and restaurants and you got the world coming to Little Golden, right? So it's great home base for being a musician. I'm the host of the open mic and jam here at the Bull Stand. We call it the Sunday Howl. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, it gets a good response. A lot of different local musicians, and then you get people just passing in from out of town. And in this setting, when you got so many different people to play with, you're always putting a different spin on a tune. It's a great stage for uh, musicians meeting other musicians, and you get to showcase your music to people from all over the world. So it's what I do because I love music, and it's just inside of me, and I don't know how to do anything else. As you can see, the potential to make your own history here in Golden is easy. But what about the town's background? Canadian Pacific Railway, they sent to Switzerland for some authentic mountain guides to come into the Rocky Mountains and guide visitors. So originally, the first guides came in 1899 and they were so successful that they continued to come year after year. Canadian Pacific Railway decided that um, perhaps if they built a village here in Golden, that they could encourage the families to come to Canada and stay as well, and that would then negate the guides having to return to Switzerland every year. The Swiss guides really came here to encourage people to use the mountains in a recreational way, and so certainly I would say that they were the beginnings of adventure tourism in Canada, if not this part of the country for sure. For some history you'll be talking about for years to come, head for the chopper to experience Golden's full ski potentials. Golden has a lot of history, almost 120 years now of adventure tourism. In 1974, I started my own operation here. I was very lucky, showing up at the right place at the right time. I knew the guides were always here, and I looked at all the maps, tried to figure out where is an area with great ski potential. That's why I ended up picking Golden. We take a lot of first-time heli skiers out, and 
When I see him up there on the first round, they're so nervous, they can't even figure out how to put their skis on, and they're finally up on top of the peak, and they pinch themselves to see, is it real? And it is, and it's, it's a great moment. But not only for our guests, for our guys, for myself, every day when, we, when we're up on top, it's what we live for. It's great to see that now my son is taking over the business. My dad was a mountain guy too. He did a lot of heavy skiing in Switzerland. So to be able to say there's three generations of heavy ski guys makes me feel good. The question I often ask is, uh, What's your favorite ramp out there? And I say, well, when you're in heaven, it doesn't matter what window you look out. It's great to be out there. Too good to be true. That's how we've heard some describe the skiing at Kicking Horse. But how would others describe it? I'd describe Kicking Horse as the most fun you've ever had on skis. Best shoots, best powder, best terrain you get anywhere. It's amazing. The only thing I can say about the views is every time you go up there, you're in awe. It doesn't matter if it's your first or a hundredth time. Views are by none the best anywhere I've ever been to. They take your breath away. Kicking Horse to me is the best resort in the world. It's the real thing. You're amongst like-minded people that are eager to share their love for the sport and their experiences with others. On a mountain that is my favorite resort and there's nowhere else I'd rather be. After you've tried to tame the horse, cruise the Powder Highway to Revelstoke and be prepared for the most vertical in North America. It's only two hours from the Kelowna International Airport, 4.5 hours from Calgary on the Trans-Canada Highway, and around seven hours on the Coquihalla from Vancouver. With over 90% of the runs at Revelstoke Mountain Resort marked as intermediate and advanced, you know you are in for a bumpy and fantastic time. Revy is home to a collection of 65 serious steep and long runs. Trek to the North Pole and impress yourself with your prowess through vertical prairies of powder. Combine that with gladed and spacious runs on the front face and you'll be stoked all day. When I was 13 or 14, everywhere I looked, I just saw photos. Like, I just saw light and cool moments and I felt like I needed to show people. Sometimes I feel like my career in photography just chose me. I didn't even choose it. It just kind of, everything just falls into place, it seems. So sometimes my sister Izzy will work on photography assignments together. I'll call her up and say, the light's good, let's go shoot. And we'll come up and we'll find some powder stashes or we'll do some groomer shots. Well, Zoya and I are super lucky to shoot together and work together in the mountains. It's just awesome, we communicate really well and she knows my skiing style so it's really easy to set up shots. I really trust her artistic eye and I know she's always going to pull something really cool together. I'm always just super happy to have an athlete like Izzy who can totally nail the shot no matter what. It's just a team effort and it's cool when we can collaborate and create. This mountain is a really supernatural place and some days the light will just be so amazing and I'll feel so connected to the mountain and what's going on and I'll pull out my camera and it's kind of like a butterfly feeling every time. Just that split second when I'm looking through my viewfinder, I know that it's gonna be a banger shot is what they call it. <laughs> From banger shots to booming bombs, let's see how a mountain of this size is maintained. I was one of the first 10 employees here at Revelstoke Mountain Resort, so I've been here for eight seasons. 
Here at Revelstoke, we have the highest vertical in North America. And within that vertical, we've got a lot of really steep terrain and up to 11 meters of snow on average per year. Put all those things together and we've definitely got some avalanche issues. When we have time, we'll kind of do some catch up and take care of sort of mature problems in the snowpack. Example of that this morning was a big hanging chunk of cornice that was probably half the size of a school bus. And we were able to drop that this morning with explosives. I work with CARTA, the Canadian Avalanche Rescue Dog Association. I've got a five-year-old golden retriever yellow lab mix named Penny. She comes to work with me every day and is on the hill in the event of an avalanche, either inside the ski area or adjacent to the ski area, we can respond. Penny this morning was picking up on human scent in that hole that we dug, uh, sort of a cave, and she knows that there's human scent under the snow that there's gonna be a reward there for her. So we were able to kind of make a little cave and have somebody inside it. She's able to bust through the door and that kind of trains the dogs into the digging aspect. Penny loves it. Our job basically is to mitigate any avalanche danger on the ski area before public get out and about. Keep people skiing, Revelstoke powder. Once you've had your fill of Revelstoke Mountain Resort, there is a whole town waiting for you with APRE offerings and more. I've been a Revelstoke resident for five years now. I'm an acoustic music kind of guy, so, you know, I play in bars and we play through PA systems, but to be perfectly honest with you, I'm finding these days my favorite musical occasions is getting together with musical friends and sitting in a circle and being able to hear yourselves <laughs> and play music. I've been playing banjo and fiddle, especially fiddle the last two and a half years. But uh, the music's called Old Time Appalachian Music, and that music and that community has really grabbed hold of me. The Revelstoke's gained a lot of popularity with, with the resort and with it being such a great town. It's an incredible place to be. I get a ski pass every year. I'm a bit of a powder baby. The having access to this terrain is wild. For an outdoor person, it's all right in your back door here in Revelstoke. As far as after your day of skiing, you might find a touring band at a bar that's come in and you can go sip on some wobbly pops and enjoy the touring band. It seems like we've had more of an influx and obviously with the tourism, we get more establishments interested in bringing live music. So there's a really good community spirit to that. What's your take on the spirit of Revelstoke? Snowseekers TV asked a few folks for their opinion. I am from Montreal and I would describe Revelstoke as a big playground. You can ski anywhere, there's lots of backcountry, um, great snow, different terrain, uh, super fun. I'm from Toronto and I think it's really good. There are many places where you can just stop, look around at the snow-covered mountains and it just really makes you relaxed and takes you back to nature, so wonderful spot. We're from Toronto, and I guess the best way of describing it, my first time down the hill, nothing but a huge grin on my face. That was it. 